guys welcome back to another episode of ed outdoors i know that I've been away for a little while but today we're back and we're cooking and we're in the kitchen and about to serve up this is a three pound one and a quarter inch thick cut sirloin coming right up eat outdoors All right, you guys, about to get started. It's been a while since I've done a cooking video, so I figured I'd do cooking today. Like I said, this is my uh, three pound sirloin. And I'll show you guys how to season it, tenderize it, and then we're gonna uh, throw in some corn. We also have some um, ribs wrapped in bacon, and we'll, we'll get to that while we're waiting on the steak to marinate. So, first things first, I like to lay it out, let it get room temperature, and then I start my seasoning, and then put it in my marinade, and let it marinate for about 20, 30 minutes. Alright guys, first thing you're gonna need, I have a meat tenderizer. Uh, this way you use, you stab it, poke it, and then it, those little sharp spikes uh, tenderize the meat. But you can use a fork if you don't have that. Alright, first things first, I have this is um, unseasoned meat tenderizer. This is McCormick. Use any brand, it doesn't matter. Start off with that. Oh, got some heavy lightning and thunder outside. So we're cooking, but we're cooking underneath the uh, covered area outside because storm's pretty bad but first thing first you go ahead and uh, sprinkle that all over you can I mean you don't have to be shy with it once you get that meat tenderized on there I like to use just coarse sea salt and that sea salt once you sprinkle it on there you'll see the meat start to sweat and the salt start to kind of soak into it I like to let that sit for a second before I put the other season on basically it's gonna bring the juices to the top of the meat and then um, they'll sink back into the meat later on all right let that hang out for a few minutes so they get all happy and um in the meantime i have a little bit of mesquite i'm going to hit it with a little bit of mesquite seasoning not a whole lot i don't use a lot of seasoning on my steak but i do like it to be seasoned i don't like just plain old salt and pepper all right a little bit of mesquite um chili powder same thing with chili powder not a whole lot just enough for the taste for the flavor and the, the ring, little rim of fat and the fat in between I like to make sure it's seasoned up because that fat once it caramelizes on that hot grill oh man it's gonna be good all right toss that aside and the money maker a little bit of McCormick grill mates sweet and smoky um, I have a bunch of these I have uh, chicken seasoning like uh, I think it's honey barbecue uh, this is this happens to be sweet and smoky and then you know I have mesquite and hickory but Hit it with a little bit of that, not a whole lot. Basically enough for this, these meats to be um, flavorful, not fully seasoned. All right, take a meat tenderizer, or if you don't have meat tenderizer, you can use forks. You take two forks and you're gonna just pound it up. I like to season before I tenderize because that pushes some of that flavor into the meat. So that way when it cooks and the outside of the meat gets nice and uh, brown, it pushes some of that seasoning into it. Make sure you get that fat nice and tenderized too. Like my steak, I like to cook it medium. Um, I don't like it gray. I like to have just a very, very, very thin texture of red, but mostly pink. Looks like the light's about to go out. The uh, storm's pretty crazy right here. But anyway, once you get that done, flip it over. Same thing on the other side. Use the same method, same seasonings. And um, basically, all you got for seasoning. Right all right, you guys, we're back and I'm done um, pounding my meat. All right, so anyway, now that that's done, give it a little pat, 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 pat. Kind of massage in those uh, seasonings. All right. Get you an aluminum foil pan, aluminum pan, I guess, or any type of uh, dish, just something that's going to hold uh, liquid. Put a big baby in there. Now this big steak covers the whole entire pan. That's a big old steak right there. All right. Get you some uh, zesty Italian dressing. 
uh, I got the just off brand. This is the best choice. Well, whatever brand, it doesn't matter. But uh, Zest Italian, and take the whole entire bottle and squeeze it over that steak. And it has all those, I don't know what all it has in it. It has a bunch of stuff. Um, but squeeze that on, get it all happy. Power's about to go out, it seems like, um, because of the storm. So if it gets dark, you guys know why. Pretty bad storm coming through Louisiana right now. Rain season coming, hurricane season is here. Um, but hopefully we're safe from hurricanes this year. Uh, hopefully everybody is, but it's ever present. All right, take your Italian dressing and make sure you cover that steak. Uh, cover as much as possible, use the whole bottle. Trust me, it's worth it. All right, once it's completely covered, you can take, now take the steak, throw it in the refrigerator and let it marinate and let it just sit and soak up. And if, if you don't like Italian dressing flavor, uh, don't worry. It's not going to taste like Italian dressing, but all these little vegetables and chunks and stuff is what's going to um, give that steak nice, tender, nice, juicy flavor. And trust me, don't skip this part because this is where uh, a lot of that juice and a lot of that good caramelization on your fat is going to come in that make it nice and seasoned. All right, you guys, I'm going to head out. All right, maybe a little loud so you can see Hurricane weather um have these rib wrapped in bacon about throw those on the grill it's a gas grill so it's pretty easy to start up and light with gas going a little clicky clicky a little flamey flamey we're in business first thing first throw on the hot side give it a nice sear let that bacon crisp up a little bit. And I'll be the only one eating these. Maybe Ari, maybe the, my daughter eat them. She loves bacon. And I hope y'all can hear me pretty well. I have the uh, microphone on, but I don't know how well this uh, rain is. Don't know how bad this rain is gonna be as far as uh, being able to hear. So. All right, you guys, while we have those uh, kebabs, on the grill, well, not really kebabs, they're uh, ribs on the grill. Go ahead with our corn. This is um, fresh on the cob corn. I love fresh corn, especially this time of year whenever they're harvesting. Fall's almost here. Man, oh man. You cannot go wrong with some fresh on the cob corn. So, wait to my corn. I mean, it's pretty simple. Uh, this corn, they have it already halfway shucked for you. Is it shuck? You shuck corn? Yeah, shuck. Anyway, I take me a serrated knife and cut off the uh, stem part right there. Just get that few wax, saw that off. And then the leaves come off pretty easily. And of course, there's always the hair. Let me give you guys a little tip. Get off as much of that string, as much of that corn hair as you can while it's still dry. Uh, but once you get most of it off, go back and wet this. If you wet it, you soak it in water, it's, those strings come off a lot easier. It's still, it's still pretty difficult to the headache, but it's a lot easier to pull them off wet once you've got most of the uh, most of it off while it's dry. All right, once you get all these shook, I'll show you guys how I do my corn on the grill. All right, once you got that switch off as you can and dry, and you literally just gonna wet it. And that string right off. Just kind of pull, kind of twist as you pull, and work those uh, hairs. I call them hairs. Those corn hairs off, and you see it come out pretty easily. Just stick to your hand, but at least it comes off of the kernel or the cob, I guess it's called. <laughs> Alright, guys. Thanks for showing you guys how I do my uh, on the cob corn. And take some butter, no matter what kind of butter it is. It happens to be Kerrygold Pure Irish Butter, you know, for the bougie people that like to have bougie butter. Anyway, um, whatever butter, it doesn't matter. So I'll take you a good hearty scoop of butter, and I take it and I like to rub it on these cobs. And basically, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be on it because you're gonna also put butter 
in your uh, foil wrap, but you want enough to coat it so when you put your seasoning on it, it uh, sticks to it. Take the butter, rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it around. Alright, that's on one. Same thing, you know, that to all your cops, just rub the butter in. Hands get messy, but it's okay though. We're cooking, and in the south, we cook, we get a little messy when we cook. And when we eat, and when we do everything else too. So, but anyway, rub that butter in. Alright, once you get all the butter rubbed in on each one of those corns, or each one of those cob corns, take you a strip of aluminum foil. And I like to use this is a uh, Hidden Valley Ranch Dips, uh, the dry packet. You can use any brand of ranch, but ranch dressing, dry packet. And I sprinkle that on the corn, just like that. I mean, I like you guys can see that. But I like, sprinkle that on the corn. Don't be shy with it. Get it all up in there. It's gonna be good, trust me, trust me, trust me. All right, if you like ranch, it gives it a hint of ranch, it doesn't overpower it at all though. Then the corn, take that. Oil, pinch the ends of it, make like a boat, give it one twist. Enough to where the heat can get in and cook, but it doesn't squeeze the moisture out of it. So that's one, and move on and do all of your cob of corn just like that. Alright, I'll show you guys again in case you catch it the first time for our people in the back that didn't see very well. Um, you know, sprinkle the ranch all over the corn. And basically what it's going to do, because it's the powder ranch, when it heats up in the corn, it's going to uh, soak into the corn, into the cob. Delicious, delicious. Alright, take that, paint the edges of it, the side, do that one twist, and then fold it over. Fold it over. Just like that. Alright you guys, that first round of food just came off the oven. Hold on a second, baby. First round of food just came off the oven, or off the grill. And it looks absolutely delicious. Look at that. Nice crisp on that bacon. Nice crisp on that bacon. You see that there? This one kind of fell apart, but hey, it still tastes. Yeah. Oh, man. It's absolutely delicious. Let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah, I Oh, yeah. Look at that. Nice crispy bacon on that um, bacon wrapped in, or uh, ribs wrapped in bacon. We'll push that aside. Be really delicious right there, and then our corn is ready. And um, let's see, go ahead and unwrap the corn. Just to see how golden and crispy. Oh, look at that! Nice and juicy, still steaming. Smells delicious. Guys, yeah, got the grill rolling. This is the flip. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Except I'm going to cook it in medium. So, uh, a few minutes on each side. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Look at it. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Uh, a few minutes on each side. I decided to go ahead and cut it. I cut it in half. Well, not in half, but I uh, cut it to skin. As you can see, where that fat was holding it together uh, from top and the bottom. Start line. Cut those off. And let them sit and just be happy. And literally, I mean, you might think this is overcooked, but the bottom of it is still raw. Uh, but literally, I want um, a little bit less color than this on the bottom. And then, I'm going to pull it out, it's going to be done. I mean, I literally wanted to heat it up enough, give it a little bit of char, let that fat caramelize a little bit, and then we'll be done with this. This steak will be ready. Medium, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Easy outdoors. And I went ahead and cut a slice, and yeah, that's perfect. You see, still a little red, still a little bloody inside, just the way I like it. Just can't cut a piece off. And sample, you know, cook always has to have always has to have a sample for the cook. Yeah. You know? Let's see if you can't. This won't be hot because it hadn't been on the grill very long. So let's see if you can't get us a sample right there. around so y'all can see yeah. mm. delicious oh my goodness that's so good all right 
come off the grill. Oh, Woo. inside we go. Look at this guy, it takes up the whole plate. Look at the beautiful juice down there. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at that, you guys. One of our bacon ribs. Take us some corn on cob. Yeah, here we go, right there, y'all. That's it right there, y'all. That is it right there, y'all. That's where it's at. That's what Southern cooking right there for you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. All right, you guys. That's going to be it. I'm going to wrap it up. Everybody, you know, you guys haven't seen any of my cooking, so I'll show you guys some of my cooking. A lot of folks ask about how I cook, how I season my meat. You guys just saw it. Y'all saw it. Y'all just saw it happen live. But y'all stay tuned. More to come from Media Outdoors. EDO out.